Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Temple Emeth and to our family Shabbat service on the first Friday of the month. I welcome you here to the Rabbi Louis J. Siegel Sanctuary in Teaneck, New Jersey. If you're joining us on live stream this evening, I say Shabbat Shalom to you. The Sidur that we use at our family service is Mishkan Tefillah for Youth. So if you have a copy of the Sidur at home, now is the time to bring it to your screen or to your device. You can have it in hand uh, and follow along with each and every song and prayer and page number in our service this evening. Also, if you're watching on live stream, I hope you'll take a moment to post something in the chat or the comment section of the live stream platform. It can be something as simple as your name or your location or Shabbat Shalom, but if you do this, then others will know that you are there, and in this way we form bonds of virtual community together. I'd like to say Shabbat Shalom as well to everybody who is here in the sanctuary. Uh, now, who felt the earthquake this morning? Okay. More than half, more than half. So before we get started with our formal service, uh, there is actually a blessing for earthquakes, which being from California, I learned long ago. Uh, and, and it means um, whose might and strength fill the earth. And so repeat after me, the, it, it starts the way uh, most blessings start, but it ends, repeat after, repeat after me, shekocho. Ugvurato, Malay, Malay. Olam. Olam. Okay, let's try it. Uh, all four words together. Shekoho, Ugvurato, Malay, Olam. Okay, now let's do it as a whole blessing from the beginning. Ready? Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shekoho Ugvurato, Malay, Olam. So with this blessing, uh, we acknowledge. God's power. We don't always understand God's power, but, uh, but we know it when we see it. And when you have an earthquake, you certainly know it at that time. So thank you for joining in the blessing with me. And we are going to continue with a more familiar blessing at this time, which is the blessing for lighting the Shabbat candles. It is found on page four. And for the honor of lighting the Shabbat candles, we call upon temple members Damari Zakin and Mary Jane Tucker. As these Shabbat candles give light to all who behold them, so may we, by our lives, give light to all who behold us. As their brightness reminds us of the generations of Israel who have, kind, who have kindled light, so may we, in our own day, be among those who kindle light. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kitshanu Vimitzvotav, Vitzivanu, Lachad Lekner Shel Shabbat. Amen. Amen. Baruch Ata We turn, we turn at this time in Mishkan Tefillah to page 8, where we find our opening song. We join together in singing at the top of the page, Hine Matov. Hine Matov Manai, Come, yeah, had he 
We turn at this time to page 22 in our CDUR. Page 22, you'll know you're on the right page when you see a large letter bet reading its own CDUR. Not unlike the way I'm reading my CDUR right now. Uh, the bet stands for Baruch Hu. Baruch Hu means let us bless and we rise. Please rise if you are able for the Baruch Hu. Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bidvaro Ma'ariv Aravim Bechokma Poteach Sha'arim Uvitfuna Meshane Itim Umachalif Et Hazmanim Umisader Et HaKochavim Bamishmorotehem Barakia Kirtsono Bore Yom Valayla Golel Or Mipne Choshech Vechoshech Mipne Or Uma Avir Yom Umevi Layla Uma Avdil Ben Yom Uvein Layla Adonai Tzvaot Shimo, El Chai Vikayam Tamid Yimloch Aleinu Leolam Vaed, Baruch Ata Adonai Hamaariv Aravim. We turn to page 29 and we read together in English. God, you gave us the Torah to show that you love us. May it always be a friend at our side. The Torah is our teacher. It tells us what is right and what is wrong. It shows us how to live good lives. Be with us always when we study Torah. Be with us always as we try to live good lives. We praise you, eternal God, who gave the Jewish people the Torah. It is your special gift to us. It is the gift of your love. Baruch Ata Adonai, Ohev Amo Yisrael. We turn to pages 34 and 35, the yellow pages with the large shin, as together we sing the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Please be seated. We turn to page 36 and we join together in chanting the Vahavta. Yet, 
Ani Adonai Eloheichem. We turn to page 38, which is where we find Micha Mocha. And on the facing page, we find a, a large letter Mem, which is for Micha Mocha. Uh, but inside the letter Mem are 12 musical notes. It almost looks like they're singing or dancing as they're walking through the letter Mem. And I think that that's on purpose because later this month, we're going to be celebrating Passover. And part of the story of Passover is how our ancestors as 12 tribes, but really as one nation, how part of the story is they sang and they danced as they crossed from slavery into freedom. And the song that they sang is the same song that's on page 38. It is almost a reenactment of what our ancestors did when they began to experience freedom. So we join together at this time in singing Mi Mocha. <laughs> We turn now to page 42, where we find the Hashkivenu. The Hashkivenu is the prayer that asks for God's protection as the sun sets and darkness sets upon us. It can be a very scary time, but when we have faith in God, it's a little less scary. That's the theme of the Hashkivenu, which we join together in singing at this time. turn now in Mishkan Tefillah for youth to page 98, page 98, which is where we find the Tefillah. Please rise if you are able for the Tefillah. Ha! 
We remain standing as we turn to page 103 and read together in English. O oh God, as we remember all you do, we make this promise to try to be like you. We will work to raise up those who fall, heal those who are sick, free those who are in need. As your partners, we will support the poor, feed the hungry, house the homeless, befriend the lonely, and give hope to all people. We will be caring Jews. As you have helped us live better lives, we shall help others. We praise you, O God, who gives meaning to our lives. Baruch Ata Adonai, Michaye Hakol, blessed are you, Adonai, who gives life to everything. We turn now to page 105 and we read together. What is holiness? Reb Nachman taught that we reach out in three directions, up to God, out to other people, and into our own hearts. The secret is that all three directions are truly the same. When I reach out to another person, I find myself and God. When I find God, I find others and the true me. When I find myself, I reach God and other people. Baruch ata Adonai ha'el ha'kadosh. Please be seated. We turn out to page 114. And we look at the English at the top of page 114. We read together, offering a prayer for peace. Grant true and lasting peace to your people, Israel, for you are the ruler and source of all peace. May it please you to bless your people, Israel, with peace always, at every moment and in every hour. Baruch ata Adonai hamivarech et amo Yisrael ba shalom. Blessed are you, Adonai, who blesses your people, Israel. With peace. We take a moment at this time for Tfilat Halev, uh, a moment to offer the prayers of our hearts. Inspirational readings for this time are found on pages 116 and 117. This time it's my pleasure to call upon the sweet singers of Eitz Chaim, our junior choir, to join us here on the Bima and to get us in the spirit of Passover with a special song that they have prepared.
Thank you, Eitz Chaim. That was wonderful. You guys can return to your seats in the congregation. And our service continues at this time with our service for the reading of the Torah, Seder Kriyata Torah, which is found on page 121 of Mishkan Tefillah for Youth. This is our Torah. Its words are the same ones that our parents and our grandparents read. In all times and all places, its words never change. May our children and grandchildren and their children and grandchildren read its words as well. In this scroll is everything that has made the Jewish people special from Mount Sinai until today. Torah teaches us love and justice, goodness and hope and freedom. Please rise if you are able for the Torah service. seated. This week's Torah portion is Parshat Shemini. We find it in the book of Leviticus and here in the sanctuary you can open the large blue Torah commentary books to page 798. Page 798. And if you are watching on live stream and you have a copy of the revised Torah commentary at home, you can find the beginning of Parshat Shemini on page 707 of the revised Torah commentary. Okay, so I have a question for our young people. Well, I'm going to work on an assumption. Young people. That you've been to a service before, probably in the sanctuary, that you thought was too long. A service that was too long. And if that's the case, I want you to raise your hand and tell me how long the service that was too long was. I see the Zaretsky children all pointing at each other. I'm not sure what's going on over there. Um, yes, Rachel? Three and a half hours. That sounds like a Yom Kippur afternoon service. We have had Rosh Hashanah. All right. Uh, three and a half hours. Anybody else? sit through a really long service, want to tell me how long it was? All right, well, three and a half hours is it's pretty long for Temple Emeth, at least, although I've been in longer. Um, so the reason I ask this is that this is Parshat Shemini. Shemini means eighth. The Israelites were at a service that went for eight days. Uh, and the first seven days were in last week's Torah portion, and the eighth day is in this week's Torah portion. And the reason it went so long is because it was a special service for uh, Aaron, the brother of Moses, and his sons, um, and for the elders, and for really everyone in the community, because Aaron and his sons were going to have a special status when the service was over. They were going to be Kohanim, they were going to be priests in Israel, and so it was a long service. 
Uh, and they, the, where the Torah portion begins is uh, saying, okay, we're ready for the eighth day of this eight-day service. It means it's almost over. Um, and here's what you're going to do. And, and when you do it, God will appear to the people. That really is the highlight, is that at the end of the eight days, God appears to the people. So um, I'm going to chant beginning uh, at Leviticus chapter 9, verse 1. And for the honor of the Aliyah, we call upon temple members Pauline Hecht and Lisa I. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Vaed. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Vaed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam. Asher Pachar Banu Mikol Hamim. Benatan Manu Et Torato. Baruch Ata Adonai. Amen. Amen. Vayahi biyom hashmini kara Moshe leharon ulavanav uliziknei Yisrael vayomer leharon kach lecha egel ben bakar lechatat veayil leolat mimim vehakrev lifnei ad. Adonai, the Elben Ne Israel, Tidaber Lemor, Kehu Seir Izim, Lichatahat, Ve Egel Vehev Espeneshana, Tmimim Leola, Vishor Ve Ail, Lishlamim, Lisboach, Lifne Adonai, Umincha Belula Vashamen. Ki hayom Adonai near e alechem. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher natal manu Torah emet v'chaye olam nata betochenu. Baruch ata Adonai nuten ha Torah. Amen. This time our thoughts turn to those in need of healing as we prepare to offer a Mishaberach for healing, which is found in the Sidur on page 125. If you are thinking of someone in need of healing and you're watching on live stream, I invite you to post the name of your loved one in the chat or comment section of the live stream platform. And here in the sanctuary, if you're thinking of someone in need of healing, I invite you to share their name out loud or in your heart at this time. As the war in Israel and Gaza reaches the six-month mark this weekend, we pray for all those who suffer because of the violence. We pray for all who do not have sufficient food or medical care that they may receive it. We pray for all whose lives are disrupted because they cannot live in their own homes. As part of our prayer for healing, we pray for a time of peace. We think as well of our temple members and their loved ones whose names will appear on your screen, either in the corner of the sanctuary or on live stream, as we turn to page 125 and we join together in singing the Mishaberach.
continue now with the lifting and dressing of the Torah. Please rise if you are able for Hagba and Galila. You may be seated, unless you have a birthday in the month of April, in which case it's time to come up onto the Bema so that you can receive a birthday blessing. Or you had a birthday in March and you missed our March family service. Any March people? You know, statistically speaking, this does not work out right. You're supposed to have about 8% of the congregation in any given month. Here we go. Here are some more people. Wait, I can't tell who's dragging who up here. All right. Are you both April birthdays? Ah, okay. <laughs> Uh, well, to all of our folks celebrating your April birthday, or March, and you weren't here for the March family service, we, on behalf of the Temple family, it's my pleasure to wish you a happy birthday. It's an opportunity as you begin a new year in your life uh, to think about all of the blessings in your life, all of the ways that you feel the presence of your loved ones and the presence of God, and to make goals for the future so that uh, all your endeavors may be blessed. And so with that in mind, uh, we now offer this blessing for you. May God bless you and keep you. May God's light shine down upon you and may God be gracious to you. Shalom. May God's spirit lift you up and may God give you shalom, the gift of peace, now and always. And let us say, Amen. We join together in singing first in Hebrew and then in English. I would now like to invite uh, our young people to join me at the front of the Bema as I share a Passover story with you. It's a picture book, so this is the spot to get the best view of the pictures. Uh, 
This evening's story is called Nachshon, who was afraid to swim. Is there anyone here who is afraid to swim? Okay, again, this rescue family is pointing fingers at each other, and again, I cannot interpret them. Uh, but anyway, we're going to find out about Nachshon, who was afraid to swim. Uh, and look, here is a landscape. It looks like the desert with some pyramids sticking up from the landscape. If there are pyramids in the desert, where do you think this takes place? Yes, in Egypt. Let's find out. In the day when in the days when Pharaoh ruled and the pyramids cast their shadows over Egypt, you're right. There lived an Israelite slave named Nachshon. Nachshon's parents, grandparents, and even his great-great-grandparents had lived as slaves, but Nachshon knew that long ago his family had been free, and he dreamed of freedom every night. From dawn to dusk, under the midday rays of the desert sun, Nachshon's father and brothers labored in the quarries, mixing straw and mud into bricks. Nachshon slipped past the taskmasters and smuggled in cool drinking water for them. Neither the Egyptian taskmasters nor Pharaoh himself scared the young boy. His family began calling him Brave Nachshon. When Pharaoh and his royal courtiers arrived in the city market, most slaves fled in fear, not Nachshon. He trailed behind and spied on them. Whatever Nachshon learned, he reported to the Israelite elders. Soon everyone began calling him Brave Nachshon. Can you see Nachshon hiding and spying on the Pharaoh? Yes, he's here hiding behind a very large jug. Okay. Nachshon, though, had one fear. In the evening, when most slaves took a cool swim in the River Nile, Nachshon stood anxiously on the river's edge. He put his toes in the water and trembled. Some days he imagined a giant crocodile grabbing his legs. Other days he pictured himself sinking slowly to the river's bottom as though bricks were tied to his ankles. The other slaves began calling him Brave Nachshon, who's afraid to swim. When Nachshon grew old enough, the taskmasters demanded that he join his father and brothers in the quarries. Each day was long, dull, and dusty. The years passed slowly. As much as he dreamed of freedom, Nachshon feared he would always be a slave. And there they are, the Israelite slaves, all lined up, all working together. Just when Nachshon began to give up hope, a stranger arrived, promising freedom for the Israelites. News of the visitor spread like a sandstorm. Nachshon ran to the riverbank to join the crowd, waiting to hear him speak. His name is Moses, whispered a fellow slave. He says he is an Israelite, but was raised in the royal palace until Pharaoh learned his true identity. Then he ran away. He says that God has sent him back to Egypt to demand our freedom. And there is Moses. Everyone see Moses standing up in front of the Israelites giving a speech, telling them that they should trust him and he will lead them to freedom. Nachshon's heart leaped at the sight. Moses' face glowed like the sun and his eyes glistened like stars. He held a sapphire blue shepherd's staff carved in the shape of a serpent. Though he spoke haltingly, his message was clear. You must have faith that freedom is possible, Moses proclaimed, holding his staff toward the heavens. Real freedom means trusting in God, Real freedom means believing in yourself. That evening, their hope renewed. The Israelite slaves played in the cool waters of the Nile. Brave Nachshon, come celebrate with us, called his friends. Even today, with the possibility of freedom, are you still afraid to swim? Moses saw Nachshon hesitate. He walked over, bent down, and whispered into the boy's ear, Real freedom means facing your fears and overcoming them. Nachshon looked at the river and repeated Moses' words to himself. It took all his courage just to dangle his legs into the current and splash some water on his body. The Nile is pretty impressive in that picture, isn't it? It goes all the way from the bottom of the page almost to the top. 
The next morning, Moses approached Pharaoh and demanded freedom for the Israelites. Pharaoh's heart was hard. He not only rejected the plea, he made the Israelites work harder. But Moses told the people not to give up hope. God will send plagues over Egypt to soften Pharaoh's heart, he predicted. And there's Moses speaking to the Pharaoh. What are the famous words that he says to the Pharaoh? Pharaoh, oh baby, let my people go. Yeah, see, we learn through music. Here we go. Um, the, when God sent locusts, let's see. Mm, I think I should read there first. The plagues did not frighten Nachshon. When God sent frogs, Nachshon caught a pear in a basket and let his nephews and nieces play with them. When God sent locusts, Nachshon picked each and every insect off the few vegetables in his family's small garden. When God made the land pitch black with light only in Israelite homes, Nachshon ventured outside to check on his neighbors. Finally, Pharaoh gave in. He told Moses to take the Israelites and leave. Nachshon and his family packed up quickly, without time even to let their bread rise. The Israelites headed to the Sea of Reeds and camped on its shores. Do you see their tents? That's where they stayed. They had to leave their homes. So now, as they go from one place to another, they're in tents. Bless you. Suddenly, in the distance, the Israelites heard a strange noise. First, it sounded like rain then like a large swarm of hornets, then like a herd of gazelles. Nachshon ran to the top of a small cliff and looked in the direction of the noise. It was the sound of chariots. The Egyptians are coming, he cried. The Israelites wept with fear. They were trapped between the advancing Egyptians and the Sea of Reeds. Nachshon knew what he must do. Moses' words echoed in his mind. Do you remember what Moses said? He said, real freedom. Oh, do you remember? What did he say? Yes, that's part of what he said. Let me read the whole thing, but it's that too. Real freedom means trusting in God. Real freedom means believing in yourself. Real freedom means facing your fears and overcoming them. And there, the fears take the shape of Pharaoh's army. But for Nachshon, of course, his fear is what? The water. Nachshon steps slowly into the sea. The water rose from his toes to his ankles, to his knees, to his waist, to his shoulders, to his chin, to his lips. Nachshon repeated silently, face your fears, have faith. Just as the water was about to cover his head, a miracle occurred. Moses lifted his staff to the heavens and a strong east wind pushed back the water, creating a dry path through the sea. All the Israelites joined Nachshon and walked with him to freedom. And there you can see them walking through the Red Sea, the Sea of Reeds, with walls of water on each side. When they reached the opposite shore, the Israelites broke into song. But Nachshon simply waded in the sea and let the cool waters remind him that he was free. Free from slavery and free from his fears. And that is the end of our story, which was called Nachshon, who was afraid to swim, a Passover story by Deborah Bowden Cohen. Okay, thanks for listening. You can return to your seats. On the poster behind me are photographs of the hostages who were taken captive on October 7th. Approximately 130 of them remain captive in Gaza, and we think of them and pray for them as we continue with the prayer for the State of Israel, which is found in Mishkan Tefillah for Youth on page 172. Please rise if you are able for the prayer for the State of Israel. We read together. We pray for the land of Israel and its people. May its borders know peace, its inhabitants tranquility, and may the bonds of faith and fate which unite the Jews of all lands be a source of strength to Israel and to us all. God of all lands and ages, answer our constant prayer with a Zion once more aglow with light for us and for all the world. We remain standing at this time as we turn in the Sidur to page 130. 
On page 130, our service continues with the Elenu. be seated. We turn to page 132, and there we find a reading to introduce the mourner's Kaddish. There are stars up above so far away we only see their light long, long after the star itself is gone. And so it is with people that we love, their memories keep shining ever brightly, though their time with us is done. But the stars that light up the darkest night, these are the lights that guide us. As we live our days, these are the ways we remember. This Shabbat, remember those for whom we are in the Shloshim, 30-day period of mourning. Elaine Chalif, mother of Andrea Winters. Sandy Rose, cousin of Ruth and Peter Adler. Elaine Kleinkopf, mother of Alyssa Sandler and grandmother of Katie Sandler. Joy Herman, a member of Temple MF and mother of Nina Seiden. Marjorie Price, a member of Temple MF and wife of Joel Price. And Albert Shansky, father of Carol Shansky. We remember as well those whose yard sites occurred this week. Rose Aaron. Stanley Atkins, Katie Blitz, Catherine Ruth Brock, Carl Chernoff, Adolf Klacko, Howard Deckelbaum, Heather Engelberg, Bernard Etson, Sally Greenblatt, George Bud Houghton, Lillian R. Kahn, Rosalind Kane, Florence Katz, Manya Katz, Arvin Kaufman, Sarah Kopekin, Mo Kromberg, Nathan Quait, Gerald Lazar, Morris Lefkowitz, Bernard Masarski, Charlotte R. Meyer, Alex Morgenstein, Helen Morgenstein, David Nirenberg, Isidore Reich, Lisa Reinheimer, Morris Ritzer, Albert Rosen, Gertrude Rosenfeld, Albert Seidenberg, uh, correction, Robert Seidenberg, Dorothy Shapiro, Wu Shufeng, Miriam Sofer Siegel, Sarah Silverman, Ada Slauson, Carl Sosland, Thomas Steiner, Ronald Zickla, Meyer Valen, Phyllis Wank Cohen, Harold Warshaw, Nathan Weinstein, and Jean Witter. We recall the names of six of the six million who perished in the Holocaust. David Davidovich, Miriam Davidovich, Chaya Dobrinsky, Lev Dobrinsky, Miriam Dohan, and Asna Deutscher. We remember them all. We take them into our hearts with our own. As we turn out to page 134, please rise if you are able as together we recite the Mourner's Kaddish. Yitgadal v'yitgadash shemei raba, ve'alma divra chirute v'amlich malchute, v'chayei chon v'yomei chon v'chayei dechol beit Yisrael, ba'agalau v'yizman kari v'imru. Amen. Yehei shemei raba mivorach le'olam ulolmei almaya, yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitpaar v'yitromam v'yitnasei, v'yithadar v'yitale v'yithalal shemei dikudsha b'richu. Leila min kol birchatav shirata, tush birchatav anechemata, da amiran be'alma v'imru, amen. 
Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya, Vichayim Aleinu Ve'al Kol Yisrael, Vimru, Amen. Ose Shalom Bimromav, Hu Ya'ase Shalom, Aleinu Ve'al Kol Yisrael, Vimru, Amen. May the source of peace and peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved, and let us say, Amen. Please be seated. It is my pleasure this time to call upon Alan Winters, a member of our Board of Trustees, to offer Shabbat greetings and announcements. Thank you, Emma. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. <clears throat> On behalf of the Board of Trustees, it's my pleasure to welcome you to our family Shabbat service. Our next Biachai breakfast will take place on Sunday morning, April 7th. Tomorrow morning, no, on Sunday morning, sorry, April 7th. Our speaker, Avri Ravid, is a veteran of the Yom Kippur War. Professor Ravid will share his perspective on the current Israel Hamas war. Hamas war. If you haven't pre registered, the event is $10 at the door. <clears throat> Temple Emmeth will once again host a second night Passover Seder on Tuesday night, April 23rd. The cost is $55 for adults and $35 for children with advanced registration, which is due by Tuesday, April 19th. Look for additional information in the lobby and in the weekly email. You're supposed to say Tuesday, April 9th. I said April 19th, didn't I? It's. It was the earthquake. It's throwing me off today. <laughs> Tuesday, April 9th. Fun and Games returns on Wednesday, April 10th at 1.30 p.m. Karen Duguid will hold a Canasta refresher session for all interested parties. Tables will be set up for Canasta, Bridge, Mahjong, Scrabble, and or other games. Temple members and non-members who play with them are free. The cost is $5 per non-member at a table without a member. The Temple Spring Bazaar is just one week away on Sunday, April 14th from 10 a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. Mark your calendar to both volunteer and shop so that this is a successful fundraiser for the Temple. Join with the Temple MF community on Saturday evening, April 20th at 7 p.m. for an evening of music to support Operating Together an organization that brings Israeli and Palestinian trauma surgeons together to promote healing on both sides of the border. The evening will, inclu will include the musical talent of Rabbi Max Jakin, Rabbi Rebecca Einstein Shore, and Thomas Mustachio. Tickets are $18 for adults. See registration in in information in the weekly email. It's long today, right? It's okay. Temple MS Viewpoints Committee presents Aging Graciously, an afternoon of stories and comedy with Faye Jacobs, 74-year-old Faye, describes her show as part laughing at baby boomers aging and part charting the history of gay rights and gay, ma gay marriage. This free event is on Sunday, April 21st at 2 p.m. Join the Social Action Committee on Saturday, April 27th for an Earth Day Shabbat followed by a Passover Kiddush lunch and, guided walk, and a guided walking tour through the revitalized Teaneck Creek Conser uh, Conserv Conservancy. Register by Tuesday, April 23rd for the lunch and or walking tour. See your weekly email for more information. Flyers are also available in the temple lobby. Because security is everyone's responsibility, all temple members are invited to attend an active shooter training on Sunday, April 28th at 10 a.m. in the social hall. Our instructor will be a specialist from the Jewish Federation. The event is free, but advanced registration is, <coughs> is required. Thank you to this evening's volunteers in the live stream control room. Marsha and Morris Sobel are at the controls this evening. Finally, if you're new to Temple Emmeth or looking to get more involved, please see me after services, and I'll be happy to tell you more about our congregation and our activities. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. And our religious school student and challah holder, Ellie, would like 
everyone to know that her little sister Kayla is receiving her Hebrew name tomorrow morning at 1030. And so you are all invited to come to services tomorrow at 1030 for that simcha and then stay for a lovely kiddush lunch afterwards. Okay, now come stand in the middle of the bima. And it's now my pleasure to invite all of the young people in the congregation uh, to come on up on the bima. Even if your bar mitzvah was a year ago or so, you're young enough to come up on the bima for the kiddush and the motzi. And the, the kiddush is found in Mishkan Tefila for youth on page six. Please rise if you are able for the Kiddush. The Kiddush will be led for us this evening by Temple member Andrew Wilson. Andrew, here we go. All right. And here's your script right there. And here's your line. Okay. Like wine, Shabbat is sweet. We lift this cup to celebrate the love of family and the joy of living. We sing the Kiddush and taste the wine to remind us that Shabbat is a day of sweetness and love. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam Borei peri hagafen Amen Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam Asher kishon and mimi tzvotam Vibrat sabahadu Vishamar kachon Join together in the motzi. Amen. We have reached the end of our service. If you've been watching on live stream, it's your last chance to post something in the chat or comment section of the live stream platform. And here in the sanctuary, as we conclude our service, we turn to one another and we say Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> Thank you.